Hello, Internet, and welcome to my live reaction for Eden Zero, Chapter 171. When we last left our heroes, um, we showed up three years into the future as the crew of Eden's has become a lean, mean, robot uprising stopping machine. Uh, we see them kind of like the top of their game uh, on the planet Swedes in the Kaide Cosmos, uh, where the robots have all been kind of brainwashed by Ziggy into starting an uprising. They go down, they stop the cores that are controlling all this or something. It's all very, you know, kind of kind of first five minutes of a season premiere. Um, you know, let, let's see how, how much ass everyone is kicking now. So maybe we can blow that all up in a, some more some more drama later. Maybe, maybe not. So we'll have to see, as I sort of pointed out last week. Then we check in on Justice and Victory. Uh, as Justice has become even more sort of hardened against Shiki and the gang in the aftermath of the Aoi War. Um, and we learn, most interestingly, that Shiki has now been recognized as a member of the Eracion Seis Galactica. And that's where we leave off, uh, with just sort of that image of Shiki as one of the Eracions, uh, which is real cool, and I can't wait to see how all that plays out. But for now, let's jump right on into chapter 171, Wander in Space. And our picture here is of like the Al Neko channel, like a chibi little loading screen of Rebecca and, and Happy. Um, and we open on like a live stream for them, uh, Rebecca and Happy, which, which Rebecca did mention uh, last time. Thanks for watching everyone. And Happy notes, whoa, we're getting fan comments in chat that aren't in the common language. Uh, we see the ones that are in their common language. Nice Vinyao, thanks. Another happy day. Good night, ZZZ. One guy just says, my waifu. Some delusional guy saying, she's talking to me. Uh, and Rebecca looks at the, the mysterious message. I wonder what language it is. And Happy tells her, hold on, I'll use a translation app. And they read it. Uh, and it says, please give me Rebecca's panties. Very wonderful. Can you with me? It's a different troll. It's not a very great translation, I suppose. Uh, Rebecca just snaps. That doesn't make any sense. And Happy pieces it together. I think it means they want your panties? That's dirty. And Rebecca snaps. They're not dirty. Uh, oh, I guess they do get dirty, just like everyone else's. That's not really what any of this is, what that comment was about. Uh, and... And then the, the chat is now kind of going wild uh, all about this. Um, and then I think this is Happy you sort of... Or I think it's still Rebecca who just snaps, Wait, what are you making me say? <laughs> and Happy sort of laughs too. <laughs> uh, and then Rebecca calls, Okay, see you later. Uh, and Happy also waves, Bye bye. And they do, they do their little ending, Meow wow, as the live stream clicks off. Uh, Rebecca sort of... Stretches back, relaxes. Couchpo walks in. So glad Couchpo is still on the crew. We stand a queen. Uh, nice work. And Rebecca stretches. Woo! That was fun. You just keep getting more subscribers. And you're getting much better at live streams. Ultra popular beekeeper Couchpo. Subscribers 5,730,000. Uh, and Rebecca looks back at her. Yeah, it must be because of all the tips you gave me. Thank you, Couchpo. Rebecca. Subscribers, 3.1 million. Uh, so she's definitely moving up in the world. Uh, and then someone walks in who is not um, Couch Po. We can only really see her behind. Um, seriously, you really were trash as a beekeeper. And now look how popular she made you. She's really something. Uh, and Rebecca just looks at her trash. Oh, and it's sister. Um, hmm. Who's in a bit more of a revealing outfit post time skip? Uh, her what used to be like a nun's habit now like stops like n just above her nipples, so she's got a whole lot of cleavage showing and like her. I can't tell if there's supposed to be shoulders showing or if that's some of the same white stuff on her collar. I'm not sure. Either way, uh, there's our, our look at sisters. Not quite redesigned in the way that like Hermit had a, had a good deal of a redesign last chapter. But she is in a new post-time skip outfit. Oh, sorry. You're right. You are worse than trash. <laughs> so, did did which, did sister ever watch um, Rebecca's old videos? Uh, anyway, uh, Couchbo sort of notes, you're just as snarky as ever. And Moscow was like popped up with, with uh, Couchbo. That is what makes sister so ponderously appealing. 
A beating from her tongue should be considered a reward. Moskoi. So Sister and Moscow still have whatever they have going on. Eden Zero, Caretaker, Moscow. Uh, and then we, we're now, we then get this sort of establishing shot of the Eden Zero still in the Kaide Cosmos. Um, they're on voice chat, or not voice chat, video chat with Elsie, who also seems to have a bit of a redesign with a bit more, a bit more cleavage showing and like a like choker necklace going on that I think is new. Uh, as Elsie asks, oh, you're still in the Kaide Cosmos. Rasion says Galactica, space pirate, Elsie. Uh, and it's Hermit and Shiki who are on the line. And Hermit tells her, Ziggy has invaded a lot of planets in this area. Uh, and Shiki asks, where are you right now, Elsie? I'm actually on a planet not too far from you. My home used to be around here. Oh, we're going to get that detailed Elsie backstory soon, aren't we? It's about time. Like, like I kind of knew as soon as we moved into the, into the, into the Kaide cosmos, that'd be kind of where the story was headed, given that we knew that Elsie and Justice's whole backstory was set in the Kaide cosmos. Uh, I'm curious how, how late into this Kaide cosmos saga it will be when we get that. Uh, but Shiki asks, what? You never told me about. And Elsie stops him. It's a, it's a story for another time. We'll stay in touch and let each other know if, if either of us manages to locate Ziggy. Roger that. And she clicks off. I guess that means that no one has really seen Ziggy in the past three years. They've only like seen his after effects. Uh, we then see Gene uh, in his post time skip design. He's really just let his hair grow out. He's got like a thick mane going in the back. It's been three years. And Laguna whose hair is just kind of vertically gone up, it looks like. It's a lot thicker, but it's not really longer. Uh, and Laguna notes, we go after Ziggy, liberate whatever planet he's invaded, then go after him again. Uh, and Shiki just sort of listens to them, uh, I'll say that. And Wise, who's also in the room, uh, turns to them, well, what else are we going to do? We don't have any clues. Uh, but Gene presses, how long do we keep doing this? And Pino tells him, there's like a, a ferocity in her eyes. She's not really backing down here. Until we find Ziggy, of course. And Gene presses, but when will we find him? Uh, and Shiki sort of adds on to that. This will go on forever unless something changes. We have to find some kind of clue. Or we'll never reach Ziggy. Uh, but Wise sort of counters the fact that he won't even leave us a clue is what makes him Ziggy. Uh, and then we cut to Clean, who has grown up a lot. Um, in more ways than one. She honestly, for a second there, I, I mistook her for, like, Angel in, in Fairy Tale. Uh, something about her, her hairstyle, sort of, especially like the sort of, the bangs and the length. Because I, I think she had the bangs like that pre-time skip, right? Let me see if I can get a quick, uh, search. Yeah, it's not too different. It's, not, it's like a little thicker than her old bangs. But it's, the bangs coupled with the length really gave her Angel vibes, uh, and also her, her boobs have grown. That also is a thing that happened. Um, and she's in the Spa of Edens. So Shiki, he's one of the Erasio and Galactica now. Is this a new uh, a new development? That he's one of the Erasio and Galactica? Because she's acting surprised by that. Uh, and Rebecca tells her, yeah, but I don't think he's too worried about it. Uh, and Homer, who, Rebecca and Homer are both also in the bath. Uh, Homer is clearly not being comfortable in the heat. Does this mean Shiki has been acknowledged as a warrior equal to Elsie? Uh, and Clean sort of counters, no, 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 that is not what it means. It means they see him as an enemy to, to, as an enemy to the government. Uh, and Rebecca, there, there's someone else in the bath. I'm not quite sure who that's supposed to be. Um, sister, maybe? I don't know. Did, did we ever see the bots using the bath? Anyway, uh, Rebecca just wrote a comment, well... The government never had the greatest impression of him to begin with. I think this is Clean who snaps. Rebecca, you're not taking this seriously. Uh, and Homer sort of thinks, the government. And she flashes back to Creed. As she's clearly not over what happened with him. Mm. Um, and Clean turns back to Rebecca. Your beekeeper channel. This could put your career at risk. And Rebecca tells her, I don't mind. Whatever anybody else may think about Shiki, he's my friend. Again, I do just love the concept of some, you know, at this point, relatively famous beekeeper is also, like, um, an enemy of the government and a war hero. <laughs> like, good shit there. Rebecca as a concept is so fucking funny to me, and, and we stan. 
Uh, but anyway, Homura goes on, but why would the government show such interest in Shiki's actions? Uh, and Rebecca, Rebecca continues, because when Ziggy takes over a planet, we liberate it before they can get there. And clean sort of snarks, you mean it's because we make them look bad? That's petty. Um, but Homer sort of pushes back. That cannot be the sole reason. Shiki's strength is real. And we find out the other woman in the bath was sister, who turns around. It's been three years, and he's gotten even stronger. Uh, and Rebecca agrees, yeah. And then we, we leave the bath, um, and we cut to the throne room. Where I guess Shiki has sort of not been, um, not been sitting in the throne because we see Witch's, vi- Witch's old visor is um, on the throne. And he flashes back to when he first sat, sat on the throne all those years ago, activating Protocol A7, executing Chain of Command Transfer Procedure. Welcome home, Great Demon King. And Witch's first appearance. I am the one charged with the maintenance of this ship. I am Witch of the Demon King's Four Shining Stars. Uh, and Witch just sort of looks at the throne as he sort of, you know, reflects on, on meeting Witch. Witch, and you too, Valkyrie. I will protect this ship. I am its sword and its shield. I swear I will beat Ziggy. And I'll take us to Mother. You'll see. That's an interesting bit. Um, given that, like, you know, the Sword of Edens and the Shield of Edens is the, the sort of terminology of, of Witch and Valkyrie, which is what he's kind of going for there, but there is a new Valkyrie. They have, uh, Homura in that role. He doesn't need to be its sword. Um, I don't know. It's, it's an interesting bit. I'm, I'm curious if that line is sort of setting anything up. But anyway, Shiki gets a little bit of, like, a, like, line appears. It's some kind of communicator ether gear, I guess? Uh, like a beep beep, or and then um, Hermit comes comes in on the line. Shiki, it's Hermit. We found a castaway. What should we do? Uh, and Shiki asks, a castaway? Who is it? Uh, and Hermit continues, I don't know. It's just one human se- sending out a distress signal. Uh, and Shiki runs through the hall. If they're human, they're probably not one of Ziggy's minions. But they might be. From, from, uh, but Hermit picks up, uh, responds. But they might be from some other organization. I do want to say though. They have had a soul human castaway before. And Connor ended up being one of Ziggy's minions somehow. Again, Connor is still just such a weird character. Don't really know what to make of him. Uh, but important to note there. Mm. Anyway, Shiki protests, or they might be a refugee. For now, let's rescue them. Uh, Hermit tells him, I'll raise, I'll raise the ship's security level just in case. And we come back to the bath. I will say... The fan service is getting a little ridiculous this chapter. It's the way that, like, like you know, we get almost a full shot of, like, everyone's boobs, except for, like, the, the small puff of smoke that hides anything, anything R-rated. It's very, it's very much. It's very, it's not, like, much in the way that a lot of Eden Zero's earlier fan service of just Mashima getting into BDSM between Fairy Tale and Eden Zero. It's a lot more old Fairy Tale fan service, which I'm a bit more comfortable with than... All of the BDSM shit Mashima would throw at us earlier in the series. Uh, but it is still just getting a little extreme in this bath scene. It's kind of everywhere. Uh, especially this shot of, like, looking up from under the boobs in at Rebecca. It, it's, it's a lot. Uh, but Homer asks, what is the matter, Rebecca? And Rebecca tells her, I felt this before. And she gets out of the bath... Um, which again, given that she's the only one who, who, who remembers Connor being on the crew very briefly, could be a sign that it's about to be Connor. Uh, and as she turns, as she runs off, sister calls, Hey, you promised you'd let me give me, give you my mind numbing torture and pleasure massage after your bath today. And Rebecca snaps back. I never said that. And she runs out the room and we see a man and this very particular, um, piratey speech pattern or a sailor speech, pa- speech pattern you you have my thanks laddies I thought I'd die a lost man in space and that outfit does look somewhat familiar uh, and Shiki asks what happened I be Captain Connor what did I fucking tell you it's Connor as you can see I be a ship's captain so okay because here's the thing 
In World 29, they found Connor outside Sun Jewel. He navigated them through the, the barrier around Sun Jewel, made the trip uh, like a, few, a day instead of three days. Um, in World 30, he was always allied with, with Ziggy, right? And the Edens won. He was even captain, captain of the Edens won in 29, but he lost it there. We're not in World 30 anymore, is my point. Is that at the end of uh, the Aoi War, uh, Ziggy noted to Elsie that we're now in World 31. And Elsie doesn't really, isn't really aware of the alternate timeline, so she's not really thinking about all that stuff. But this is now the Connor of World 31. He's not necessarily in the same position he was in in World 30. I don't know. Uh, anyway, as you can see, I'd be a ship's captain. And Wise looks down at him. Wow, he's awfully full of himself for a guy who just got rescued. And Hermit presses, and I can't actually see that you're a captain. And Shiki says, Captain Connor? Feels like I've heard that name before. So, how much does Shiki remember? Because I know at the end of the, the Belial Gore arc, um, you know, Re Re Rebecca had that moment of, where is Connor? Where is he kind of gone? And no one knew Connor, so they didn't really comment on that. Um, but also at the end of that arc, Shiki got his memories of World 29 for a moment, right? Did he hold on to those, or has he forgotten those again? Like, where does Shiki remember Connor from? Uh, I don't know. Anyway, uh, Jane presses, answer the question. What happened? Uh, and Rebecca runs in the room. He's the enemy. She's like only wrapped in a towel. Didn't have time to get dressed. He's the enemy. Tie him up right now. And then I think that's Laguna, even though his hair is kind of shaded white in that panel. And in the next, and further down the page too, um, Laguna presses Rebecca. And Rebecca explains, I met him in world number 29. You should all recognize his face and voice when we went to Grand Bell. And Connor looks at him kind of confused. At her kind of confused, I mean. Uh, and Wise is conf also confused, huh? And Shiki calls back, I've, I've never seen this guy in my life. And Rebecca explains, he's the captain of the Edens 1. Uh, and Connor protests, now wait a moment. Edens 1? What be this talk of an Edens 1? And Rebecca presses, don't pretend you don't know. You work for Ziggy. And Connor goes on, True it be that I worked at his droid factory, but it weren't till just recently I learned the factory belonged to Ziggy. As soon as I found out we were making cruel and vicious robots, I got myself out of there. That's when I went to drift. So when was he a ship captain then? That doesn't fit with his established story. Mm. Well, Rebecca presses, he's lying. But Wizen and Herman have another idea. Wait a minute. Ziggy's droid factory? And Pino calls... It's a clue. And Shiki, now sort of more confident than he's been in, in the past, more, more determined than he, I think he might have been in the past three years, notes, we found it. We found the road that will take us to Ziggy. And that's where we leave off. Um, okay. So let's talk about the elephant of the room. And that is Captain Connor. Because I think it's time we finally get to the bottom of Captain Connor. He now has three different life stories. He's in, like, he's more than any other character the one most radically different between World 29 and 30 and 31. You know, for everyone else, there really wasn't that much of a difference between World 29 and 30. Except that Rebecca remembered 29 when she went to 30. And that's how everyone was able to sort of uh, shift the timeline, able to, to stop Draken. Except Connor never was there for Sun Jewel. Um... And as a result, never and also never lost the Edens 1, and was there to pick up Ziggy, was an active member of Ziggy's forces. He was aware of who, of who he was working for. World 31, it's radically different. Um, you know, he seems to have never even, unless he's lying, which he very well might be, he was never even the captain of Edens 1. And if so, that sort of changes his story dramatically. Because... You know, in, in 29 and 30, he was working for Ziggy before Ziggy reawakened. Probably before Ziggy even originally lost his memories and went to find Mother with, with the Shining Stars. Um, given that, you know, he was already working for um, the, the, dark, the darker, eviler Ziggy back when that Ziggy had lost all his memories, right? Um, but this one... 
if he was work, it seems to be that he was only working at the robot factory. I don't think Ziggy would have had that robot factory going for the the decades he was, you know, um, not bent on on robot revolution. Um, so Connor is just such a wild card. I have no idea what's going on with Connor. And honestly, I am very excited to get to the bottom of this man. He's just, he's always kind of a funky design. And I'm really curious to see how exactly all of this plays out. Uh, but before we get to that, before we get to Connor, we get some more, um, some more of what, like, the, what, of what Last Chapter was doing of sort of reestablishing the world, reestablishing where everyone is in their personal journeys. Uh, you know, we check in on, on Rebecca and how she's doing with her, with her B-Cube channel, uh, how she's sort of, you know, catching up to the, the superstars like Couch Po. Um, we see Elsie, who's in town, uh, doing her own searching for Ziggy. And also, you know, reminiscing about her, her older life, uh, which we'll definitely get info on soon. We're seeing these sort of, of simmering tensions as three years have passed and they're no real closer to stopping Ziggy than when they started, at least before the end of this chapter. Um, we spend some more time commenting on, on what it means to be a member of the Galactica. Some more time just sort of, again, establishing all of this, this new world is what these last couple chapters have really been until... Connor shows up, and now there is a clue to get to Ziggy. There's that droid factory, and maybe from the droid factory they can get to Ziggy himself and actually start, you know, taking tangible steps to bring Ziggy down. Maybe, possibly, again, it might not, might all kind of come to naught in the end, but this does feel like the end of the introduction of, of the new era. Uh, we've, we've had our time to reestablish everyone, and now it's time to get the, get the show on the road, um, and start tangibly tracking down Ziggy in a, you know, consequential, I suppose, uh, way. So yeah, lots of fun stuff to have there. Again, cannot wait to see what all happens with Connor, uh, cause he's just been this mystery for like a hundred chapters now. I want to see how all that plays out. Uh, but yeah, beyond that, that's all I got to say for this chapter. Hope you all enjoyed the chapter and the video itself. If you did, feel free to drop me a like or subscribe or, you know, do whatever makes it happy, you know? And as always, your life is your own, okay? Bye.